Yo, what is going on guys? Welcome back. Today we're going to be building a end-to-end -end Solana NFT gated website using Next.js server-side rendering techniques all in less than 30 minutes. Let's dive in. So today's video was made possible by our amazing friends over at Third Web. Third Web is an incredibly powerful Web3 platform. In fact, it's so awesome that they just released the ability to launch your Solana programs onto the blockchain with simplicity. Using Third Web's new platform, which I'm gonna demo today, you're gonna go ahead and be able to create your own NFT gated community using Next.js. All of this is going to live on the Solana blockchain. So you are gonna be creating some real NFTs and allowing only members who own those NFTs to access the website. As Next.js 13 is still in beta, I'm gonna be using Next.js 12's server-side rendering approach to go ahead and get the job done. If this video hits 2000 likes, then I will make a follow up video explaining and how you can go ahead and convert all of your Next.js 12 apps into Next.js 13 apps. So if you want to see that, be sure to smash that thumbs up button right now. So let's not waste any time. Let's dive straight into the demo to show you exactly what you're going to be building today. So as you can see, I have hit the homepage of our website. If you didn't know, we actually launched the University of Code. So make sure you check out papareact.com University of Code. The link will be in the description if you want daily coding problems sent to your inbox. Yes, I said it. Daily coding problems with the solutions the following day are being sent out to everyone enrolled in inside of the University of Code. Go check it out. Back to the build. This screen is only available for members who own and purchase the Papa Fam NFT. So as you can see up here, we have a warning. And if I was to log out of this page, which means that I am no longer connected via my phantom wallet, let's go ahead and log out right now. You can see I am back on the login page, but let's go ahead and try and trick everything and head over back to the home page. Ah, it kicks me out because it says, no, 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 you're absolutely not allowed unless you're logged in and you hold an NFT inside of your wallet. So as you can see, we have a members only access system in place. We can go ahead and log in. And as you can see, it will pop up with my phantom wallet asking me to approve. As you can see, once we've logged in, we get exclusive access to this page. This is a protected route. Now to give you a better representation of what's actually going on. So let's go and jump over to the login page while we're actually logged in with a valid pass. So as you can see, it will load. It will say, hold on, we're just looking for your membership pass. And it found it. Exactly. So it found an NFT that we were searching for and you can go ahead and access the website. Now, what happens if I'm logged in? So I'm actually logged in with a Solana Phantom wallet, but I don't hold an NFT pass. So I'm going to quickly log out. I'm going to go ahead into my Phantom wallet and I'm going to change from my main account to my second account. And as you can see now, we can go ahead and we can connect our wallet. So this will go ahead and connect to my second wallet. Let's go ahead and approve. And now what should happen is it will attempt to go ahead and try to redirect me, but it failed as we didn't have an NFT pass. And as you can see right here, it will show and tell us that you can, uh, you have the ability to buy a membership pass if you'd like. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and buy a Papa Fam membership pass. And what this is actually doing is it's actually buying it from the NFT drop collection that we've configured inside of Third Web. All of this is happening on the Solana blockchain. Once that transaction goes through, we'll detect on the front end that the user now has that pass. We'll get the access granted message and we now can access the website. So as you can see now, if I was to go back into the login page, it will actually show me that I have the token so I can access this website. Let's take a look at the third website of things. So on the back end, how is all of this being powered up? So on third web, we have our NFT drop collection. This is a Solana program, which we've deployed using one of the many available templated options given to us from third web. They just actually released this incredible power to deploy to the power powerful Solana blockchain. Now, some other cool things I like about Third Web is that they're free, they're open source, and they're chain agnostic. You can easily deploy all of your Web3 apps to Solana, Ethereum, Polygon, and a host of other different blockchain networks. It works amazingly with teams. You don't have to share private keys. You can easily share your contracts with team members or other external parties. You can view all of your contracts in one dedicated place, and you can even keep track of your released and deployed 
versions of your actual smart contract or program on the blockchain, which is incredible, right? You haven't literally got a version control system on third web. To get started with all of this, make sure you use the first link in the description. It will support the Papa fam, which will always help more videos like this to keep on coming out. Without further ado, let's dive straight back into the build and continue on. So we have two parts to this build, the Next.js build on the left and the third web preparation on the right. First thing we're gonna do is set up a Phantom wallet. First thing that you wanna do is head over to phantom.app.com. And right here, you can go ahead and click on the download option at the top. Simply follow the instructions, set up your first wallet and pay attention guys, when they ask you to take down your secret keys Please hide and save those secret keys very securely. If you give away those secret keys for whatever reason, which you should never give away, guys, that should be absolutely private, then your wallet is compromised and you should be creating a new wallet and sending your assets over to the new wallet. So be very careful when you're dealing with this. Now, once you've actually gone ahead and configured your first wallet, we have a few options to configure. Let's head over to my main account, my YouTube account. If we head down to the developer settings, you can see we have the ability to change the network. Now, mainnet is where the Solana currency actually has real value. Now, this is where you have to pay real money to get hold of Solana. Testnet is used for essentially mimicking the live environment. So when you want to essentially push your app to the real environment, you would likely test it on the testnet before you head to mainnet and for the rest of us developers out there we have localhost and devnet so when we're sort of building out our apps like today we want to use the devnet it's a great approach to go ahead and use so i'm going to click on devnet right now so now that we have our phantom wallet ready let's go ahead and create our first nft drop collection so that way we can provide our users with a membership nft pass that they can use to access the website so firstly i want you to go ahead and head over to thirdweb.com forward slash network forward slash solana and we're going to click on start building and as you can see right now they have three really nice pre-built programs for us to go ahead and deploy the one that we're interested in today is simply going to be the nft drop so first things first you want to go ahead and connect your wallet we're going to click on phantom wallet and as you can see it's gone ahead and connected now if it's your first time it's likely that you're going to get a pop-up which is going to ask you to authenticate the request now before we go ahead and deploy our nft drop what we need is something called our developer token right we need some test solana token that works on the devnet so third web themselves actually have a faucet so you can actually head over to thirdweb.com faucet solana right and you will get to this screen simply pop it in and click the request funds button if you have any problems with that you can simply head over to another faucet drop in your address and if you're wondering how to get your address simply go ahead and click on copy head down here paste it in and simply airdrop one solana token to the devnet not the testnet we're going to be using the devnet so if i go ahead and check mine what you should be saying is you should have at least one solana token available and make sure that you're currently on the devnet so i have two accounts here for testing purposes so the first one i had the youtube account the second one i just created a second wallet and i went ahead and funded that as well so now we're going to go ahead and proceed back to the page where we can deploy our first contract. So back over at the program selection screen, I wanna click on the NFT drop after I've connected my wallet. Now at this point, we're gonna go ahead and type in Papa Fam membership pass. And here I'm gonna go ahead and simply give it the name of pass, right? And we're gonna say this is an exclusive pass to the Papa Fam, right? And here we're gonna go ahead and give a total supply of 100. So 100 exclusive places can be given. Now we're gonna go ahead and upload a file. We're gonna click on a logo. We've, I've actually gone ahead and uploaded the logo for our brand new University of Code, which is incredible. It's my most exciting thing that we've done yet. Every single day, you will get coding problems delivered to your email inbox with solutions given to you the next day. So if you're interested in that, popperreact.com forward slash University of Code. The link is in the description. So once that's all done, you just need to head down to the bottom 
click this drop down and hit on DevNet. It's very important you do that. Let's go ahead and click deploy now. And what you will get is a pop-up from our Phantom wallet, which asks us to authenticate the request that we're trying to make. So what we're essentially doing is we're pushing our program onto the Solana blockchain at this point. So this is going to be a transaction. So we're going to go ahead and click on approve. So now you can see we've successfully deployed our program onto the Solana blockchain. So at this point, we should see our Papa Fam membership pass. So we need to do two things. Firstly, we need to upload all of our NFTs and then we have to set the claim conditions. So first things first, we're going to do a batch upload for 100 different NFTs, which are going to resemble our NFT membership passes for the members coming onto our website. In the description, I've gone ahead and provided you a nice zipped file, including two things. So what you should see inside of that file is an images folder and a PapaFam drop sample data CSV. All you need to do is go ahead, click on the batch upload, and then you wanna go ahead and simply grab those files and drag and drop it into the box provided. Once you've done that, what you'll see is all of the metadata is going to be auto-filled for you. So I've gone ahead and done the work for you. As you can see, we've got the image, we've got the name, description, and some sample external URLs. So in this case, we've got the University of Code. Again, check it out. You will not be regretting it. And we've got a background color. Let's scroll all the way down. The next button is here. So let's go ahead and click it. Simply going to go ahead and upload 100 NFTs. We'll ask us for permission. So we are going to have to approve the transaction. Now what we've done is essentially something called lazy minted so this means that we've created the nfts in the nft drop however each one is unclaimed which means that every time someone wants to buy one they will purchase the nft and cover the gas fees associated with it so that's the beautiful thing about using solana as well is the transaction cost actually tends to be quite low next up we need to go ahead and set our claim conditions and this is how we're going to allow users to start claiming from our lazy minted nfts so let's go over to claim conditions let's Let's click on add claim conditions and we're going to set the time to drop to right now which is great we're also going to set the price of each one to be 0.01 and then we're going to say the unlimited amount can be claimed you can claim up until 100 if you'd like okay and once that's done we're going to use solana as our currency great and we're going to actually not be using any royalties the primary sales will go to the person who created it so whenever you whoever deployed the actual program onto the blockchain so in this case the account i'm logged into they will automatically be the primary sales because they own the program at the moment and it's worth mentioning that when you do deploy to solana via third web you own everything okay so third web do not claim ownership of your pro program or smart contract everything is in your name and it's completely free all right let's go ahead and click save claim conditions and this will again ask us to approve a transaction so let's click on approve and once that's done you can see we should get a success message great so now we get to the fun bit let's go ahead and create our next.js app build the front end and actually interact with this solana program so the first thing that i want to do is i will be using next.js with tailwind so i like to use this with tailwind css quick start which will actually allow us to set up a next.js 13 project very quickly with tailwind already set up for us so i'm going to go ahead and copy this line and then i'm going to go into my terminal paste in and i'm just going to go ahead and change the name right here to be something like this and hit enter and this will create our next.js app with a tailwind template already set up for us once that's done installing we're going to go ahead and jump into that right now by saying cd solana third web hit tab and enter and then from here you can do this nice little shortcut code dot to go ahead and launch it inside of vs code let's dive straight into it the first thing that we're going to do command j pull up our terminal and we need to install a couple of dependencies. The first thing you want to do is yarn add and you need to go ahead and install the following dependencies. So we've got third web dev react, third web dev SDK, Solana wallet adapter react, Solana wallet adapter react UI and Solana wallet adapter wallets. So we need all five of those to go ahead and get started. Now, while that's loading, let's go ahead and set up our environment variables. So inside of today's build, we're going to need two key variables. One, we're going to need the private key of the wallet that we actually deployed the smart contract to. Secondly, we're going to need the program address of the third web Solana contract that we just deployed. And where are we going to put these? So first up, let's go ahead and open up a new file called .env.local. Private key for the first one. 
private key and for the second one it's going to be next public because we don't mind if our client sees this and we're going to say program address so for our private key we can simply get this by heading over to the phantom wallet attachment and here you can go ahead and click on the top left head out down to security and privacy export private key and enter in your password and you will get in a value once you have that value simply copy that value in right here and this needs to be the wallet that you've actually gone ahead and deployed the app to secondly we need the program address so on the Papa Fan membership pass page over here you can see this is the actual address so we're going to copy the program address and we're simply going to head over here and paste it in so i'm actually going to go ahead and replace this with the real value and then close this file in just a second and we're done so i've added in my private key i've added in my program address the next public program address and now we're ready to jump into the builds and the first thing that we actually need to do is wrap our entire app inside of a higher order component so head over to underscore app this is essentially the starting place for the entire app however index.tsx is the home page of the app so in order to see if the app is actually working at this point let's go ahead and do yarn run dev so this will kickstart the app up on localhost 3000 so let's go ahead and start it off you should see this welcome to next.js template so first things first let's go ahead and head over to underscore app.tsx and now what we want to do is go ahead and make the following imports so we're going to need a bunch of different providers like the third web provider and the wallet provider we're going to need the network to tell third web which network in this case solana that we're going to be working with and the phantom wallet adapter so that way we can use our phantom wallet with our application secondly we're going to go ahead and prepare two variables the first is going to be the network which is of type network and as you can see if i was to remove this and just put in quotes you can see we get all of the different nets that i explained earlier so the second one is your domain this could be your website domain or whatever you decide to use moving forward in this case i'm going to keep it as example as this is just a demo and the final thing we're going to need is the wallet adapter so what i want you to do is go ahead and wrap the entire thing in parentheses drop this down a line so first things first i'm going to wrap it in the third web provider pop this inside like so these are the props that we're actually going to need to pass it. The first one is the auth config, and this is a object that we pass in. The auth URL we're going to set up in just a second. This is going to handle all of the authentication to make sure that the user is logged in or not. Then we've got the domain. Now, process.environment.vercel URL, we didn't set this earlier. However, when you deploy to Vercel, this actually automatically gets populated with the URL that you're assigned when you deploy. So we're going to either rely on this or fall back to the domain that we've provided. Okay, then we've got the login redirect. After you log in, where do you want the user to be redirected to? And then finally, we've got the network that we're operating on, in this case, the DevNet. Now, inside of this, we're going to go ahead and wrap our app with something called the wallet provider and wrap our entire app in the wallet provider, like so. Now, what this is doing is it's allowing our app, so imagine this to be our entire app. It allows our app access to all the functionality of the wallet provider and the third web provider. So now we can use all of the handy hooks, the things that we have come to love inside of our Next.js apps. Now we have access to them. Next up, we need to create something called our authentication handler. So let's go into our file structure and I always click on package JSON to make sure I'm at the top level, add a new file. And here I'm going to say auth.config. .ts. Now inside of here, we're going to import the dependency like so. So it looks like I forgot to install one dependency. So let's go ahead and install this dependency right now. Cancel my current terminal. Do yarn add dash dev dash auth. And while that's doing that, what we're going to do is export a useful handler with two items that we're going to essentially need. So let's go ahead and drop down. And as you can see, the error is now gone. So we're going to go ahead and actually invoke a function called third web auth with the following inside of it. So this is the arguments we're going to pass. So inside this object, we've got the private key that we set earlier, and we also have the domain, right? So in this case, we can actually go ahead and use the domain that we set up from our pages app previously. And now once this function has been resolved, it will return an object. We're going to open that object by destructuring as seen in the brackets here, and we're going to get the third web handler and the get user and we're going to export them so that we can use them throughout our app. Next up, we need to create a special API endpoint. So we're going to click on the API folder, add a new folder called auth. And inside of here, I'm going to create a new file. And I'm going to call this one. It's going to have a special name, this file. It's going to have square brackets. And inside, it's going to have dot, 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 third web. 
and then outside it's going to have .ts. And all we're going to do here is we're going to import our auth config that we previously set up. And all we need to do to ensure that this gets working is export the handler like so. This will handle the authentication portion for us. So that way now when we use our special hooks that we're going to use in the next section, such as login, log out, it will know exactly how to log in and log out the user. So now that that's done, we're going to first move over to our login page. Inside of the pages directory, I'm going to add a new file called a login.tsx. So once we've done this, I'm going to go ahead and create a functional component called a login page. Let's pop in our dependencies above like so. So now what we're going to do is change this page into this beautiful page that you see right here. So for the surrounding div, we're going to have a bit of styling attached like so with our nice custom background color. Now to go ahead and get that diagonal element that we see over here, I'm going to use a div with a nice bit of tailwind styling behind it. And as you can see, we automatically have our nice background color with our skewed div, which is colored with a nice drop shadow below. So first things first, we're going to eventually need the login and logout functions. So I'm going to go ahead and use them like so. The next thing is we're going to need to redirect the user at some point. So we have a nice router object in case we need to do it and the user object from use user. And this will tell us if the user is ever logged in. Next up, we're going to need access to the three following special functions from the use wallet call. This is going to be used when we actually need to connect to the user's phantom wallet. And finally, a piece of state to go ahead and store the user's NFTs. Now, as we're going to be communicating with our Solana program on the left, we actually need to make a connection to that NFT drop collection. We can go ahead and create the following. We can use the use program hook. And as you can see, I'm using the next public program address that we set earlier. And the second argument is the type of drop. So in this case, you can see we've got three different types of Solana programs that we can actually, we had the ability to choose from earlier. So in this case, we're going to do NFT drop. We're going to destructure the program. And then we're going to use a few very useful hooks to get some information about the current NFT drop program. This will go ahead and give us back the unclaimed supply. So in this case, the unclaimed supply is actually 100 because there are 100 different passes here that are unclaimed. The use NFTs will go ahead and give back the actual NFTs. So this will provide us a list of all the NFTs inside of here. And then we're going to finally use the use claim NFT to actually purchase an NFT when the time comes. Now, when the user comes on the page, I want the wallet to immediately pop up and prompt them to actually sign in, have a use effect that looks like the following. So here we're going to say, if there is no public key, we need to select the wallet and we need to make a connection to it. And at this point, what we're essentially doing is we're actually going to go ahead and select the user's wallet. So the phantom wallet is automatically defaultly selected here because we used a phantom wallet adapter. And then it's going to attempt to connect. So this is the behavior whereby we come onto the page and it pops up with the wallet prompt to go ahead and authorize. Secondly, I'm going to have a use effect which will go ahead and check the NFTs that return from the collection against the user's logged in address. So this will actually allow us to go ahead and set the user's NFT variable to the NFT that is found in the collection if the user actually owns it or not. Be careful as well as we always need to make sure we include the relevant dependencies inside of a use effect dependency array. If you get confused on any of this with use effect stuff, Make sure you go check out the video that's popping out right now where I explain how to go ahead and nail use effects in React. And finally, we're going to have two useful functions, the handle login and handle purchase function. The handle login is simply going to log in and redirect. And the handle purchase is going to go ahead and do a claim, which is going to prompt the user to make a purchase for one NFT to their wallet. And then it's going to redirect them to the homepage as well. So first things first, I'm going to use a Next.js image tag and we're going to go ahead and simply pop in the actual logo for the Papa fam. Here I'm going to pop in an image tag. But if you do know anything about the image tags in Next.js, we have to go ahead and whitelist the links.popreact domain inside of our next config. Head into next config, simply type in images inside, pass it an object, pass domains and links.popreact.com. Once we change anything inside of our next config, we have to go ahead and cut our server and run it again. Next up, I'm going to have the main body of the content. I'm going to pop in a H1 tag like so. And this is simply going to have a nice little header which says welcome to the Papa fam. Next up, we're going to go ahead and check if the user exists and render out the handle login button like so. And this will only show if the user does not exist, which means that they haven't actually connected their wallet yet. Now, if there is a user, I'm simply going to go ahead and pop in the following right now. 
now. And what this will do is, is it will cut the first five characters and the last five characters with a simple dot, dot, dot in between. So let's test this out. Let's go ahead and log in to our app. As you can see, I go ahead and get a nice signature request. You can see it redirected me, which is correct. But let's head back over to the login screen. And now you can see it says welcome because it's detected a user. Next up, it's gonna have the is loading. And this is gonna run whilst it's checking to see if we actually have an NFT membership pass. And the way it does this is it simply attached to the is loading from the use NFTs. And this is gonna be basically true while it's pulling in all of the NFTs. The NFTs will then change, which will resort to our use effect change. And then this will update our user's NFT state. And this will go ahead and show us as it's searching for the membership pass, so as it's pulling in all of the information, we can go ahead and wait for it like so. Now, if it did find an NFT pass inside, what we would wanna do is simply go ahead and show on the screen like so. We wanna say access granted, enter. So as you can see in this case, we don't own an NFT pass, right? Even though we're the owner of the program, all of the NFT passes right now are actually unclaimed. So this is why we don't see that button right here. So the next step naturally is to go ahead and include some kind of buy a membership pass button, or if it's all ran out and everything's claimed, we should say, sorry, we're all out of Papa Fan membership pass. So this will do that exact thing. So we're going to say if the user doesn't own an NFT and there is no more loading and the unclaimed supply exists and it's greater than zero, so in which case there is still a membership pass available, then we've got a nice ternary operator here, which is going to basically render out buy a Papa Fan membership pass and it will trigger the handle purchase that we set up earlier. And if there aren't any available, it will go ahead and resort to rendering out. Sorry, we're all out of membership passes at the moment. And as you can see right now, we have the ability to buy a Papa Fam membership pass. I want to go ahead and add in the final addition, which is to say that if there is a user present, we should have a nice login button just before the bottom of the main tag. So let's go ahead and pop in a nice little logout button right now. So let's go ahead and check this out right now. I'm going to go ahead and buy a membership pass. What should happen is it's going to try and claim one from the collection. So it gives us an estimated charge of how much it will cost. We're going to approve the charge. And then we're actually going to go ahead and head over here. This will go ahead and actually create a real Solana on-chain event right now. Once we've minted it, it gets a token ID because it's been actually put onto the blockchain and it's provable. Now, the next step naturally is to go ahead and check if that little check what we did earlier is actually correct. There you go, access granted. And if we click this, it redirects us like so. What we now need to do is protect this route. We're gonna switch our wallet to the different user. So first things first, let's log out. And then I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my second wallet. So I'd highly recommend setting up two wallets for this tutorial. So now we've got the second wallet and we're gonna go ahead and connect our wallet like so. So as you can see, I've approved my connection to the wallet, but this is what we shouldn't be allowed, right? We shouldn't be allowed to access the main page. It should be a protected page. So let's dive straight into that right now. So heading over to the index page, First thing we need to do is go ahead and clean things up. And the first thing I wanna do is actually run a function before this. So this page typically in Next.js is already something called statically generated page. Now this means it's made at build time and it won't change, but we're gonna make it something called a server side rendered page. And the way that we do that is firstly, is we're gonna go ahead and import all of the dependencies that we're gonna need. Now I'm gonna change this page to be a server side rendered page, which means that it will actually generate on the server every single time a user makes a request to get that page. And this allows us to do some really cool things. We can actually go ahead and check if the user exists, if they're authenticated, all of that good stuff. And if they're not, we can redirect them saying never see the homepage in the first place. So how do we do that? Well, we essentially just very simply use this function right here, get server side props. Well, first things first is we need the SDK. So we can use the third web SDK to get our SDK like so. This will give us the SDK for the DevNet. The second thing, we can use the handy get user function that we previously had from our authentication module earlier. And we can go ahead and actually get the user. Now, what's nice about this is that if this user exists, we will get an object that has an address inside of it, which will correlate to the user's wallet address. So what we can actually do at this point is I can very simply say, if the user is not logged in, we want to redirect them. We return a redirect object. When we do a server-side render, if we return an object with redirecting, it tells Next.js that on this server-side render, 
This was the result of it. You need to redirect the user to the login page. So the next step is to go ahead and get access to the NFT drop collection. So I can see all of the NFTs. I can get all of the claimed NFTs. So I don't really care about the unclaimed ones. I just need to get all of the claimed ones. And then I can check against that to see if my user that is attempting to access this page actually owns one of the claimed ones. So let's do that right now. Firstly, we get access to the program. Then what I can do is I can use this really nice function called program.getAllClaimed and this will only return the NFTs that have been claimed which is the ones that we care about. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a simple find which will go ahead and see if there is a match with any of the NFT owners against the user. And as you can see right here, the owner should match the address of the user's wallet if the person logged in actually owns the NFT. If they don't have an NFT, we can redirect them to the login. And then the final thing that we need to do with any get server side props, we need to return some props. Now at this point, if you want to optimize this, you could actually return the pass itself if you really wanted to. But in this case, we're not going to do any sort of a form of that. We're just using the server side rendering here. To go ahead and redirect if needed. And yes, you could use middleware. And yes, you could be potentially doing this next year's 13. However, there are some caveats to doing so. So let's go ahead and give this a try. So I'm going to try and refresh now on my homepage. And as you can see, the person I'm logged in as actually doesn't have a pass, right? So in this case, once this comes back to us, it will give us the option to buy a pass. Now, if I try and go ahead and go to the index page, you can see that yes, I am logged in. So it bypassed the user check. But as soon as it checked, if I owned an NFT, that's where it failed. Right, so in this case, it would have actually gone ahead and redirected me at this point. So I've gone ahead and tried to go to the home page, and bam, it redirected me to the login page. So now we've automatically protected that route. Awesome. So let's go ahead and log out right now. And I'm going to change my wallet to the YouTube wallet. So that way I have got an access pass because we actually bought one previously. I'm going to connect to the front end. So in this case, let's go ahead and do so. Now I should be able to get redirected to the index page, and it shouldn't kick me out. Great. That's because we own an NFT and that's because we passed all of these checks and we made it to the end. So we've done the protected root aspect of the build. So at that point, you've actually gone ahead and created your first ever NFT gated website. As you can see, we've got a protected root right now, which will not let anyone who does not own that NFT or that is not logged in through to this page. You can go ahead and extend this to go ahead and have a protection against multiple pages by using several different approaches. Middleware is one of them. And if you want me to make a video on that, I'll be glad to if you enjoy this video. Just smash the thumbs up button if you're enjoying this right now. Now, the only difference between this and the first final product is one, we have this beautiful UI. So if you want access to this, it's going to be in the Papa GitHub repo. However, I'm going to simply go ahead and pop it in right now for everyone to see in case you want to pause the video and have a look at the code and how we go ahead and use it. The only thing that we were lacking was a logout function, but this was essentially the code to go ahead and actually render out the beautiful UI that you see on the page to give us the final outcome, which is for the members only page. So as you can see right now, that's how we go ahead and achieve the final goal of having this beautiful page, which is protected and allows our users to have a nice members only experience through the power of NFTs, all powered by the incredible simplicity and power of the third web platform. So just like that, guys, you have a protected web page. Feel free to leave a comment down below with what you learned inside of this build. And remember, if you haven't already, check out the University of Code, where you can get daily coding problems delivered straight to your inbox. Every single day, guys, you're going to get a brand new problem and a brand new solution delivered to your inbox, which has been by far the way that my students have learned the most. So we stopped messing around. We released exactly what you wanted and you can feel free to sign up today. All right. So make sure you go ahead and do not waste any time. Head over to the link in the description, jump in, and I will see you in your first day with your coding problems and solutions. Thank you so much for tuning in, guys. This has been your boy, Papa React aka Sunny, and this has been your end-to-end -end Solana NFT gated app build using Next.js server-side rendering techniques. I hope you've enjoyed it. Do not forget to smash the like button, subscribe to this content if you want to see more just like this. And as always, guys, keep crushing it and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.